Hi all and welcome to my channel. If you've already seen my Christmas pudding video tutorial, you might be very interested to find out that we've added a body. So stay tuned and I'll show you how I made it. So let's make him a body and let's make him into a pudding vase. So using the same two yarns I used for the Christmas pudding ornament or decoration, it's uh, they're both James C. Brett which didn't dawn on me before but one is Twisted Fashion Aran and the other is Bubblicious DK. And here are the sizes of the arms and legs that you will need to knit up for this project. I have knitted and made up one already and I'll show you how to make up the arms and legs. On the 22 pin for the legs knit 10 rows of white, 30 rows of brown and another 10 rows of white and do two of those. And for the arms, you're going to do 10 white, 40 brown, and 10 white, and again, two of those. So for the body, we're going to cast on as normal, over and under, over and under. Zero our clocks. And for the head, if you remember, we did 60 rows, if I recall. So for the body, we're going to be doing 80 rows. I'll probably pop my drill attachment on shortly and whiz through those 80 rows to save my shoulder and if you don't know what drill attachment well it's a screwdriver attachment actually not a drill that I'm using pop over and have a look at the Christmas pudding ornament video and you can check out which one I'm using so I'll crank on now and I'll see you near the end just before we cast off I've done the 80 rows for pudding head okay and I've got my tail now which I've trimmed on a darning needle and I'm just going to cast off so there's our work off the machine and now we'll move on to preparing the arms and legs and then assembly so I've knitted my 80 rows on my RD46, but can be done on the 48 as well. Okay, so we're going to do um, exactly what we did for the head. We're going to make basically what is a beanie. So one end inside the other so that the both cast on and cast off edges are together. I'm going to cinch my inner section first. As you can see there, there's a little bit little tiny bit of rogue yarn really strange in the whole skein just like the um the piece of yarn had uh, kind of tangled itself very odd went through the machine okay that's all that matters so gather the inside one in first and manipulate the the gathers and the stitches so they're as neat as possible and then do the same with the outer one keeping that tail of the way there. That's my join because I run out just towards the end. I'll gather the outside one doing exactly the same, evening out all those those gathers so you get a nice neat cinch. And what I do then is I will snip my tails because they're very very long and I'll keep that length then for doing um a uh, running stitch around the edge for when we seal up the other end. A couple of knots and I'll wrap that one round twice like I always do just to seal that one off and then put your tail inside stretch your work out so it's nice and evenly stretched 
like that and hide your tails or turn it inside out whichever suits you best. Next take one of the tails you just chopped off, pop it on a darning needle and we're going to use that to put a drawstring around the bottom edge of our work. So this edge here, start anywhere, doesn't matter and I go under two stitches and over two stitches on average just to even out the um, the cinch when we're putting it together so I'll whiz through that now that's our drawstring done all we need to do now is get our fuzzy wuzzy stuffing and fill the body of our pudding face and I like to push it to the outside edges like that to make sure it's all nice and round and then we can shape it make sure we've got plenty in the bottom as well so that's going to take a little bit more. You make him as puddingy as you, as you like. Squidge it and form it a little bit. Put a little bit more there because his head is going to sit there. And we're going to pull that tight now. Pull our drawstring to seal that end off. And the same as you would with a beanie. A couple of knots and a couple of stitches to finish off. If you get a little hole left like I have there, by all means uh, put that on a darning needle and seal it shut. But as we are popping the head on the top of this body section, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be stitching around anyway. So that choice is up to you. So let's move on to popping the head on our body. And then we'll deal with the arms and legs. And we have our pudding head ready to go here. And I've left one of the tails on the body that we just cinched up with. And I'm going to pop that on the darning needle now. And I'm just going to pop my head on the top like that. Okay. So I'm going to centre my head on there like that. Okay. And I'm just going to mattress stitch in between the head and the body. So you just do however it sits for you and then we'll just do our best. I'm going to take it out a little bit, the, the yarn out, just a half inch or so. Centre my pudding head and then just mattress stitch his little head on all the way around. So I put it so you can see what I'm doing. So just a stitch in the bottom and a stitch in the top all the way around, securing his head onto his body. I like to dig in and get a little bit of stuffing if I can because that gives me a really good um, anchoring then rather than just relying on the, the yarn to take the, uh, the strain as it were. So I'm just going to roughly do it and I'll probably go around again then and do some finer stitches but just to attach it on for now that'll be adequate and he's looking okay head on his body. I'll refine the stitches a little bit now off camera because I am leaning over the table a little bit to make sure it's all in uh, in focus and in frame for you all. But I have a little something planned for his neck area anyway so we'll discover what that is shortly. So let's call that done for now. 
and we'll move on to preparing the legs and the arms and attaching those to the body there. I'm just going to pop a knot in there now. And like I always say, you'll do a much neater job than I am because I'm on camera and at a funny angle to get this in frame. So for me, that'll be fine. And there's our pudding head. He's got a body. Yay for pudding head. Now we're moving on to preparing the arms and the legs. And this is one that I prepared already and I'll show you how to do that. So with your completed knitted piece, don't forget to secure any color changes on the inside with a double knot, okay, like I have here, I've already done mine. And then prepare it as if you were doing a beanie, exactly the same as we've done with all the parts really so far. One end inside the other, cinch one end and cinch the other and tie off and add a few knots. And then hide your tails inside or turn it inside out, whichever suits. I turned mine inside out because the knitted area seemed to be neater on that side. I've got a few tucked stitches there. Um, that's my fault. I wasn't cranking in, a, in an even fashion, but it doesn't matter because we're going to be folding this. So grab a piece of stuffing, golf ball size or maybe a little bit more, and pop it down the middle there like that to stuff out the end of the paw. I'm going to pop a little bit more in there. I've even got some offcuts of my uh, snippets of yarn that I use for stuffing as well. It doesn't really matter. Nothing goes to waste. So I'm going to pop that there. And then what we're going to do, because I've got a few tuck stitches, I'm going to look for my neatest part. It's about there. That'll do. And that'll be fine and dandy. Push that down there like that. And we're going to fold in half like that and use some stitch markers if you like to work that way. I'm just going to go freestyle. I've got a knot, just happens to be a knot on the end of my yarn, so I'm just going to use that. I'll tuck that in there. And I'm going to pick a line and stick to it as much as possible up here, because it's difficult to see, and just mattress stitch up the length, closing it off into a nice little tube. And you do this then for the other three legs as well. Obviously they're different lengths, but the process of assembling them is exactly the same. I'm going off my line a little bit here. So you can be a little bit more more fussy and careful than I'm being at the moment and up to the end. Now I'm going to tie off with the brown because I don't want a mattress stitch through the white with the brown because I'm afraid that that will show through so I'm just going to put a knot there to finish off, change to some matching white and finish off that little piece with some white. I'm going to hide my tail inside there like that. Okay, so that's not the best mattress stitch job, so by all means, please do a better job than I've just done, but it's just to show you how to form that. So to finish off, I'm going to mattress stitch up there about an inch. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of the white, do a securing stitch there, and then just continue up for about an inch to finish that section off. And to pull that paw into a nice shape. Flatten that out then. I'm going to put a little stitch there to hold that. There's not much further I can go really. And hide that tail in there coming out on the white part this time so we don't get any contamination of colours popping through. And there's our little paw done. Now, if you want to add a little bit more stuffing, you can do it. You can pop it down the centre there before we do the next stage. 
with matching yarn on a darning needle and you can see the seam there running down the middle okay and that's a rather ugly seam I've done there but moving on um, flatten the work at the top okay and we're going to seal this end shut in a flat fashion okay so just stitch across the top like that just um, an ordinary slip stitch all the way along the top closing that off as close as you can to the top don't go too far down the knitted section you'll end up with it with a bulkyish seam so as close as you can to the top Closing that off. I'm going to end on a knot. Pull that tail through there. And that's our leg done. I've got a little bit of a fluff. I can trim that. And there's our paw done. Like I said, do the rest the same. So do the other three exactly the same. I'm going to leave that tail on there to attach it onto the body. Okay, and do the same with the other three, and then we'll attach them to the body. To get a little bit of definition in between the paw and the arm, when I finished off um, stitching up the white bit there, I've just gone back down onto the, the join between the two, and I've wrapped the white yarn around and pulled it a little bit tight, and just put a knot in there then like that, just to give it a more of a hand and arm shape. Don't have to do that but I thought I'd show you that's what I've done with mine. And it kind of separates it off a little bit more into a hand. Okay? And there's the difference between one with the string tied around and sectioned off and that's without. Okay? So the choice is yours which one you'd like to go for. So now we're going to start attaching the arms and the legs and we're going to start with the legs which are the shorter of the two. Okay, so the legs are the shortest ones and we're going to put them on the bottom of our pudding head, okay, so that he can sit flat. If you put them underneath like that he's going to flop forward, he's not going to sit straight. So if you sit your pudding head up like that, okay, and then put the legs like that and like that okay so that's what we're heading for that kind of thing there and then pin them into place and mattress stitch them into place and then we'll move on to the legs I'll show you quickly how I'm going to do mine so mine is roughly there I'll remove that one for now and I've got my yarn ready so I'm just going to hold him in place there like that not to move him too much but by all means pin yours and I'm going to stitch against myself a little bit here. Okay, so I'm going to mattress stitch along the bottom and catching the the leg as well. Here we are, I'll have to put that there. And I'm going to flop him down afterwards and I'm going to stitch along the top as well. Okay. because we want our pudding head to be able to sit up nice and straight and flat on a surface. And then I'm going to let the leg fall down like that and I'm going to stitch across the top as well like that. Again you can be little more careful than I'm being here and I like to dig down a little bit to get a good anchoring. I find the, uh, the stitches are a little bit loose and saggy for my liking if I don't. But you stitch anyway that suits you. But I like to get a little bit, go down a little bit and up, grab a tiny bit of stuffing and I feel it gives a better anchor. All the way along and do the same with the other leg and then we'll come back and we'll do the arms then so pop around under there now to the side to the side a little bit 
back under the back and the underneath and we'll secure off and hide our tails out of sight under there in there like that and if you want to put another row of stitching in to make doubly sure and carry on and do that but I'm happy with that so I'm just going to put a knot and hide my tail I'm just going to feed it up inside the leg like that and chop it off and there's one leg attached looking nice and also moves I'll attach the other leg now and then we'll do the arms Now that his little legs are attached, we're going to move on to the arms, okay? So when he's sitting upright, he should have his little legs sticking out at those kind of angles there, all right? If that makes sense. From that angle, it's difficult to show you on camera, really. Make sure when you're lining up your legs as well to make sure that they're central with the face and the head. I don't think I'm bang on, but um, it's adequate for now. So let's move on to the arms. Now, the arms are the longer... Of, um, of the four items that we made okay so put your um, yarn on a darning needle and we'll stitch on now where you place your arms is going to be entirely up to you okay I'm going to show you where I'm going to pop mine now you can put them there if you want to okay but I'm going to pop them under his neck like that a little bit because I think that's kind of cute okay so that's where I'm going to be popping mine if you can see there there's his leg there so I'm going to be coming up the side of his leg a little bit and up like that if that makes sense and I'm gonna stitch in the neckline there using mattress stitch again okay so one arm will go there and one arm will go there that's my that's my choice for doing the arms but by all means you can move the arms down there if you want to I think that looks a little bit odd it doesn't suit him quite so much I think popping them there makes him look really cute and cuddly okay so that's what I'm going to do I'll put one on while you're with me and then I'll do the other one off camera speed up the video a little bit so I'm gonna line him up with the edge of his leg there roughly straight up and tuck him under his neck there Again, I'm working against myself a tad, but I'm going to open up that neck a little bit and stitch in there. Mattress stitch. Oops, my hands are in the way. About one stitch on the bottom, one stitch on the top. And I'll do underneath as well. So you may need to push on your body and your head here in order to get the needle in because he's a tubby little pud in this one and I think he's looking cute but I've got a nice little embellishment to add and we'll run through that now once we've put the arms on and I've not tried the idea before so fingers crossed it works down into the stuffing again if you possibly can grab a little bit of stuffing it does give a really good anchor and a good connection between the two pieces and now I'm going to pop the arm up and I'm going to fasten it underneath the arm as well just mattress stitch all the way along making sure that that seam is facing the body okay seam downwards same with the leg seam downwards onto the floor so we hide that um, seam out of sight from the main body of the project so my mattress stitch is a little bit um, ad hoc and large I'm not sticking to stitch by stitch or row by row this yarn is very forgiving to my uh, lumpy mattress stitch which is great 
coming back up to where I started from now so I'll just put a, a knot in there and hide my tail so let me just do a knot there now hide my tail pop that down to the body this time snip that off and that's one arm connected and looking really cute and sweet and now we'll attach the other arm and I've made a little collar piece and all I've done is on my 46 I cast on with green and knitted 12 rows changed to red and knitted 6 rows changed back to the green knitted 2 rows and it's an ordinary cast on both ends and all we're going to do to make this into a, a little pretty collar is we're going to gather both ends up not too tightly at, at the, this point in time okay as if making a, a beanie that's the idea and then we'll um, fold the one end inside the other like that so fold the the 12 rows up to the other rows like that and we'll end up with a pretty little collar for our pudding face And we'll fit that to him now in a minute. We don't want to gather it too much because we're going to pop it around his neck and gather it up and tie it off at the back. So here's our pudding face and here's our little collar we've just knitted up. So it's a little bit messy at the moment but don't worry about that. It'll all come together now in a second. So put the ties or the tails at the back. Keep it folded in if you can it is a very small fiddly little piece and we're going to pop it up through his legs I think that's easier rather than pulling the head around too much so we're going to pop it up there one arm through and then the other arm rather than disturb the, the pretty head that we've done okay we don't want to damage anything there move the tails to the back and then it's just a little bit of pripping and fussing until we get it where we want it to be. Grabbing our tails, gathering it in and tying it off. Simple as that really. It's nothing super complicated. Just doing a bit of arranging and that kind of thing. And then with a little bit of twiddling and positioning of the, the gathers we'll get it to sit where we want it to sit you could put a scarf on him of course by all means I mean you could knit 100, 110 rows on the 22 pen of the green that was an option I had but I thought well let's do and do something a little bit different and then it's up to you then what you prefer to do I kind of like this something a little bit different just gather gather and primp and primp and put those edges in if you can and we'll get our ties together it is a bit of a fiddle we've got to say but once we gather those in there right around his neck like that we can we can push all those gathers into the neck area there and they will almost disappear so fold in, fold in like that. Once you've gathered it in, it'll disappear. And you'll end up with a pretty little ruff. So I'm kind of more or less happy with that now. And if you wanted to finish it off just a little bit more, you could add a little bit of ribbon around the neck area as well, which I may very well do in a minute. Let's trim this super long tail off which makes it difficult to tie so a nice tight tie like that round twice like I mostly do we can trim that tail off later and just push those gathers in into the edge there like that position them and position them there you go and they're all tucked into that neck cinch and you can hardly see them at all and <laughs> I think that is adorable now add other embellishments if you want to 
I'm going to hide that tail in a minute. I'll just add it onto a darning needle and just pop it through into the body or the head of our pudding face there. Okay, so as you can see, the they are quite nicely hidden in there, like that. So it's all about positioning. There's a nice uh, neck crease in order to hide those gathers in there. And as you can see there, it's looking quite neat and tidy. All you can see is the line. But if you want to put um, another little bit of ribbon around there, you can by all means. And apart from that, I'm moving all my rubbish off my table. I would call him done. And I hope you like this project. I may add some uh, little baubles on there. I have got, and I'll show you now quickly. I have got some of these fuzzy little little balls. And so I could pop them on there. I don't know whether that's maybe too much because it's not quite the same red. And the other thing you could do is you could maybe pop some little red buttons like that down his middle if you wanted to add something else that's an optional extra for you so I hope you love Pudding Face because I think he's absolutely adorable you could also add a nose to your Pudding Face if you like I quite like him without but by all means you could add a little felt type nose to add a little bit more character or even embroider one on like we did the mouth just a few little strands of pink or red or whatever colour you fancy his little hat and his little leaves are just awesome. They are gorgeous. I absolutely love this little guy. So please, if you like him, yay, I hope you like him. Or oh, the other thing is, in order to make the head, okay, check out this video here. Check out this video here. And that will show you how to make the head, okay? It will also show you how to make the pudding head shape in another two sizes which you can use for an ornament or um, some home decoration over the festive season okay so if you do like this like I've already said please give us a thumbs up yay thumbs up thumbs up thumbs up for pudding face and subscribe if you haven't already if you have subscribed thank you ever so much your continued support is very very much appreciated and if you do make and sell any of my patterns Please, would you please, please, please consider giving a little donation to a local no-kill animal shelter. The lo local ones are struggling and even a few pounds or a few dollars would go a long, long way. And if you like my patterns as well, please can you tag me when you post on social media. CraftyCars33 on Instagram and Cas Harris on the Facebook knitting groups. That also would be very much appreciated. Okay, thanks guys, I'm off now and I'll see you very soon. Enjoy and be good to yourselves. Bye for now. Music